Salam damai bagi kita semua. Banyak cara yang dilakukan oleh kawan-kawan muslim untuk menyerang kekristenan, salah satunya adalah mereka menggunakan materi-materi dari Dr. Bart Ehrman, baik itu materi dari video-video maupun dari buku-buku yang telah ditulis oleh Bart Ehrman. Dr. Bart Ehrman adalah seorang teolog dalam bidang perjanjian baru yang berasal dari Amerika Serikat. Ehrman telah menulis dan menyunting setidaknya 25 buku, termasuk tiga buku teks perguruan tinggi. Karya Ehrman berfokus pada kritik tekstual perjanjian baru, Yesus dalam sejarah, dan perkembangan gereja perdana. Tetapi yang tidak diketahui oleh kawan-kawan muslim adalah walaupun Bart Ehrman adalah seorang ateis, tetapi Bart Ehrman tetap mengakui kebenaran fakta historis penyaliban Yesus Kristus, yang mana hal ini sekaligus membantah pernyataan dari dalam Al-Quran bahwa Yesus tidak disalibkan. Selain itu di dalam video ini, Kalian akan melihat reaksi Bart Ehrman ketika dirinya ditanyai mengenai maukah dirinya meneliti Al-Qur'an. Let's jump right into the topic of this video. We're going to talk about the prominent New Testament scholar who was educated at Princeton under the late great Dr. Bruce Metzger. His name of course, Dr. Michael Holmes. Now that was a surprise, wasn't it? Dr. Michael Holmes, just like Dr. Bart Ehrman, went to Princeton where he did his doctoral work under the supervision of Dr. Bruce Metzger. However, he is an evangelical, unlike Dr. Ehrman, and as such, most Muslims won't want anything to do with Dr. Michael Holmes. We'll talk about him a little bit later in this video. But a while ago, I did post a video where I sort of comically uh, show how ridiculous and one-sided the Islamic treatments of the text of the New Testament are. Let's do a quick review. Let's go see who this article is citing. Bart Ehrman. Bart Ehrman. Bart Ehrman. Bart Ehrman. Bart Ehrman. A book that was co-authored with Bart Ehrman. Bart Ehrman. Bart Ehrman. Bart Ehrman. Bart Ehrman. Bart Ehrman. Co-authored by Bart Ehrman. Bart Ehrman. Bart Ehrman. Bart Ehrman. Bart Ehrman. Bart Ehrman. See also Bart Ehrman. Bart Ehrman, Bart Ehrman, Bart Ehrman. That's all Muslims want to talk about because he seems to, in many ways, support the presuppositions, the things that Muslims have been ingrained with since their birth. However, just as Muslims are inconsistent in their treatment with the biblical text, that is, they'll cite certain passages and leave others out, they're inconsistent with their treatment of Dr. Ehrman as well. And so in this video, we're going to cover a couple of important and uncomfortable facts that Muslims would rather leave untouched that come from their favorite New Testament text critic, Dr. Bart Ehrman. So we're going to run through these rather quickly and then draw some conclusions. Let's jump to number one. The position I argue for in misquoting Jesus does not actually stand at odds with Professor Metzger's position that the essential Christian beliefs are not affected by textual variants in the New Testament. So there you have it. Essential Christian doctrines not affected by textual variants. That's not what Muslims think. Number two. The crucifixion of Jesus by the Romans is one of the most secure facts we have about his life. That's from Dr. Ehrman's blog. Now, Muslims don't want to believe this as well because of perhaps the most ahistorical ayat in the Quran, namely Surah 4, 157, that says that Jesus was not crucified. Dr. Ehrman disagrees. Number three. How about working on the Quran? Yes, when I stop valuing my life, that's what I'll do. When I stop valuing my life, that's what I'll do. Now, at this point, some Muslims will say, well, Dr. Ehrman, what, what he really meant was he doesn't value Islam, he doesn't value the Quran, and so in that sense, he doesn't value his life if he starts taking time to actually do any serious work in these areas. However, due to the fact that there have been numerous death warrants issued against high-profile critics of Islam, there is a more natural understanding of what Ehrman is saying here that is intrinsically more plausible. Let's jump to number four. When asked about 1 John 5-7, Ehrman replied, Because the doctrine of the Trinity isn't based on a single verse. It's not? No. I mean, no, there aren't any Christian doctrines that are just based on a verse. Mm -hmm. Christian doctrines are based on looking at the wide range of authorities. The doctrine of the Trinity is because there are places where you have the Father, the Son, and the Spirit that are mentioned, like in Matthew 28. 
and there are passages that uh, that show that uh, Christ is God, and there are passages that show that the Spirit is God. And so, if you've got Father, Son, and Spirit, they all can be shown. So they, so they just mix them up together and well, they come up to with, justify a monotheistic yeah. religion. You develop a you yeah. develop a theology based on a wide. If you if you're a biblically oriented person, mm -hmm. you base your theology on a wide range of biblical texts, not mm -hmm. just on one verse. And some of this bears repeating. The doctrine of the Trinity is not based on a single verse. I had this come up recently in a comment. Let's hear it again from Airman. Because the doctrine of the Trinity isn't based on a single verse. Also, there are passages that show that Christ is God. And there are passages that, uh, that show that uh, Christ is God, and there are passages that show that the Spirit is God. So, the doctrine of the Trinity is not based on one verse. Christ is described as God in the New Testament as well as the Spirit. Three more uncomfortable facts for Muslims from Airmen. And finally, Constantine was not responsible for the rise and spread of Christianity. What I try to show, this goes back to what we were saying earlier, I try to show that given the rate of growth that Christianity was experiencing, um, at the rate of growth it was going, Christianity was going to take over the empire, with or without Constantine. Right. And that if Constantine hadn't converted, then probably one of his successors would have, would have, would have right. done because just growing at this steady rate that they're going, by the time you get enough people, these numbers just start, it just the whole movement starts avalanching and it's just gonna take over. So I don't think that Constantine is the reason that it took over. So let's do a quick review and summarize. Textual variants do not affect essential Christian beliefs. The crucifixion of Jesus is one of the most secure facts about his life. Airmen will start working on the Quran when he stops valuing his life. The doctrine of the Trinity isn't based on a single verse. There are passages that show Christ as God, as well as the Spirit. And finally, Constantine was not responsible for the rise and spread of Christianity. So think about this from my perspective. There are two types of Muslims generally on my channel. The minority of Muslims will be those who are at least in some sense open to um, the data, even if it contradicts what they've been taught. There are some Muslims who are open to, at least in some ways, critical and independent thinking. But then there are the other types of Muslims, again, broadly speaking, and this is the majority on my channel, who will simply regurgitate what they've been taught since their birth. And no matter what you say, no matter what you, you tell them, you get the same response. Okay, So it's like talking to a robot. Now, how much time would you spend talking to a robot? Not very much. And so to those Muslims who seemingly dozens of times per week regurgitate things that Airman has said or things that they think Airman has said on my channel, all you're going to get in response is a link to this video. It's actually much quicker to produce a video and just copy paste it as a link in response to these comments than it is to deal with these comments typing back to them uh, individually. But for other Muslims who fall in the other category I mentioned, who are open at least in some sense to data, who are attempting to think critically and independently, then I would recommend you jump over to the Evangelical Text Criticism blog. One of the contributors there is Dr. Michael Holmes. I talked about him at the beginning of this video, but there are numerous other contributors as well who are highly qualified in the field of New Testament text criticism. And so for Muslims who are honestly interested and not being so one-sided. Not because I'm afraid of Ehrman, but because the material is so one-sided that unless you do an awful lot of work, you won't get any balanced sources or evaluation or the like. Hop over to that blog and have a look at what those scholars say. And for the rest of you who just give your sort of pre-programmed robotic response, well, all you can expect to get from me is just a link to this video. I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.